Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Frances Harney. She is a graduate with a degree in dental hygiene from 1984 from the University of Medicine and Dentistry in New Jersey. She started practicing biological dentistry in 1984 and has established working relationships with many medical providers in the field of alternative and integrative medicine and is one of the founding members and on the boards of the first holistic chamber of commerce in the state of New Jersey. She is now the qualitative director of Holistic Dental Center in Melbourne, New Jersey. She is also a speaker on biological modalities, a ghostwriter for articles and blogs on holistic dentistry, and has created many YouTube videos. She has experience in public relations, marketing, and social media. She is an active member of the IALMT, the IABBM, and the the American Academy of Oral Systemic Health. Please join me in welcoming Francis Honey. Thank you. I just want to quickly thank a few people that helped me get here today. Um, we have uh, Deborah Grant, Newcom, uh, Washington Homeopathics, um, Dr. Chris Kammer of the American uh, Academy of Oral Systemic Health. He's the founder and president, uh, a friend of mine who's actually helped me a little bit here. And I can't forget to thank Dr. Vladimir Kaczynski, who is continually having me be the better version of myself. So I thank him a lot, a lot of this. Um, with angiolytic uh, medication, calm your patient in the chair. A calm patient, somebody who has no fear, is going to be more receptive to your treatment recommendations. They are going to sit in the chair, they're going to complete their treatment. They're not, they're now going to become a patient for life and they're going to be referring to friends and family. So it's a win, win, win across the board. And you've known you've helped somebody be able to overcome a paralyzing fear or anxiety. So wouldn't it be great to feel like this before you go to a dental office and you feel like that when you're there? But oftentimes this is what they're feeling like. The anxiety can sometimes be so paralyzing that they can't even pick up the phone to make that appointment. So we have several different levels of anxiety. You can have a simple anxiety is, just, oh, I just hate the dentist. So I don't want to go. They have a level of fear. You can tell they just want to get out of there. They're white knuckling a little bit, but they manage to get in there. And then you have the intense fear or phobia, which is actually very, um, very, uh, damaging because we know that the oral systemic health, because if they're not getting dental work, that's going to potentially affect their health overall. So about 82% of the public has a fear of dentistry. Um, it's about four out of five of your patients in your, in, your, uh, in your office. That means if you have about 30 patients a day, about 25 of them have a certain level of anxiety, and some of them are not even telling you that. So they're keeping it quiet. So, I mean, that's a pretty high number. So um, let's face it, who wants drills and needles in their mouth? Uh, not too many people. So, you know, we, they look at us like we're doing these things to them. No, we want to do things for you, but we have to get them through that anxiety and fear. So some of these patients who are not telling you that they have this anxiety, there is something called a modified dental anxiety scale, which is actually in the handout in the app uh, that you can actually print out and you can give to your patients and they can actually scale. You can see if they have any anxiety and then you have these options that you can help them. Now, even more so, you have one out of five people will avoid dental work completely. Um, that's about 60 million people. That's an excessively a lot of amount of people. They'll put up with gum infections, broken teeth, uh, swollen jaws. They just cannot pick up that phone. Um, that's about 19 to 15% of the Americans. So it's extremely important that we have options for these patients. Because some of these patients are not only afraid of the dentist, they're afraid of the angiolytics. They don't want to take Haldol. They don't want to be knocked out. They don't want to have to have a friend drive them. They want to be able to get in, get it done, get out and then be able to be cognitive and be, you know, have an awareness about them. So these are some simple, simple tools that you can use. So fear of the dentist is basically equated with the fear of public speaking, which, <laughs> you know, I can attest to a degree that is true, um, which actually is feared more than death to be honest with you. But so it's a pretty paralyzing fear sometimes. Um, that's about 36% of people who don't go to the dentist 
say that it was the fear that stopped them. But it's really not their fault. It's the sympathetic nervous system. It's the fight or flight response because whether a threat is real or it's perceived, the amygdala in the brain is now firing off and you'll have that level of fear. So I can have a lion running after me and I'm just, I'm like, I'm booking. My fight or flight is, you know, I'm, my adrenaline's flying and I'm just running. Or if I'm afraid of the dentist, I'm going to have that same physical reaction. So what do we do with a patient like this? These, my, these patients, their mind stores their negative reactions when they were a child or, or if they were an adult. Whatever negative reaction they've had, that stays in their, their process in the back of the mind. So it's always relived every time it's um, activated. Can't reason with patients who have this fear. Um, they can't cognitively process anything. So you're trying to talk to them about treatment recommendations or how to do post-op instructions after you've done that surgical uh, procedure or post-op scaling root planning for us hygienists, etc. They're just not hearing you. They got that deer head and uh, you know, eyes in the headlights, and they're just not processing a word you're saying. So it's it's something that we really need to deal with. So how does it make them behave? They start gagging. They got the tongue battles. You got that big tongue that's just following you everywhere and you can't get anything done. And you're like, oh, it's, it's causing your appointment to run late and it's, it's becoming a, a battle for themselves and for you. Excess, excessive salivation. Um, they have gallons of saliva now that they constantly get up and spit out or they're constantly swallowing. Clenching jaw. You know, they're starting to close. Or you ask them to open and it's what they're doing. Um, a lot of us have battles with the, especially that lower left when you tell them to open, they're doing this. So it becomes really, you know, very difficult because they're trying to, it's self-protection mechanisms. What they're doing is not trying to be difficult. It's just that they're self-preservation. Stalling and uncooperative behavior. So they'll ask, keep asking questions or they'll keep trying to do things. They keep getting up to use the sinker. There's things that they're doing to stop you from putting needles and drills in their mouth. Clutching and grabbing. How many of us have had patients grab their arm while you were working on them? I have, unfortunately, more than once. It, it's scary as anything for you, and then I'm more scared for the patient because you're afraid you're going to hurt them more because of that jerking motion. It's just not good. So uh, that's, that's part of a fear process. And then unpredictable movements. That's when you're working on them, and all of a sudden they're jerking away. And when they're jerking away, how are you supposed to get anything done? So these are these are a lot of the behaviors. Um, so we need answers of how we can get this done. Now, I'm going to give you stupid, simple things that hygienists can do. You don't have to have a license. You don't, even doctors, you can do this. You don't need to have doc sedation, uh, you know, education and all that stuff. These things work. Um, this is what I use in uh, our large practice, um, and it works quite well. Um, first of all, essential oils. Of course, we're going to talk about essential oils. That's like the king of, of uh, angiolytics, you know, lavender oil. You have lavender oil, which is known for its anti-inflammatory, antifungal, antidepressant, antiseptic, anti-anything. You make the list as long as you like. Um, it is a detoxifying and it actually lowers the blood pressure. It's a hypotensive um, hypotensive and sedative effects. Um, it's been around for about 2,500 years um, and it is extremely helpful in reduction of, of uh, anxiety in our patients. And here we have a study that shows that um, they had a control group where they used no uh, odor and then they used lavender. And there was a significant reduction in anxiety with patients that used lavender. So this is something extremely easy that you can do in your in your office. So the lavender scent reduces state anxiety in dental patients. So they specifically did it in a dental office. Next, you have orange oil. Orange oil is extensively utilized in aromatherapy, and it helps soothe tense muscles as well as depression. Um, it promotes a feeling of wellness and happiness, and you know it's a good emotional response. So. Orange oil is a great way to also, if people don't want lavender or they're allergic to lavender, you can also use orange. It has a very uh, uplifting. And also what it does is it helps regulate a uh, hormone like uh, cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone, so it actually lowers the cortisol. So that is very, very um, helpful. 
here we have again another study that's suggesting that the use of uh, orange and also here we have lavender um, can reduce anxiety. The ambient order of orange was diffused in the waiting room and it appeared to have a relaxant effect and they also had a control where it did not do anything. So here we have some studies that are suggesting it so it's not just anecdotal and plus you know if you've used it you've seen it that it does work. So what are the best ways to use lavender oil? You're actually going to be a little surprised in my suggestion to be honest with you and you'll see why. I'll tell you why in a minute. The most simple way you can take it just put a little on the patient, have them put it on their wrist. Um, probably best to put it in a carrier oil because even though lavender is supposedly not sensitive, you have, especially patients that come to our office, a lot of our patients are sick that come to us, so you want to just try to prevent them from having any other issues. Put it in a carrier oil, like maybe a coconut oil. You take a half a teaspoon of coconut oil, two drops of the uh, lavender, mix that up, and you can just put it on their wrist, you know, back of their wrist, you know, um, I even have like here the, the lava rock stone. You can put it in the lava rock stone. They can do that. If somebody has long hair, put a little bit on their long hair. They can smell that a little drop on their bib. Um, something that they can just have that ambient um, odor. Um, it works quite quite nicely. So there, it's all just right here for them as opposed to diffusing in the room. I'll explain to you why in a little bit. Here, these I like for your op for your office and for those doctors that are here. These are so cheap; it's like crazy cheap that you can buy these little rollerball ball drawers. You take about twenty drops of the uh, oil. You put it um, again with uh, a carrier oil, and these this becomes the patients. I'm like, into this hygiene thing. You know, all us hygienists are very like microphobes. You know, we just don't want any cross contamination. So, whether you can keep this in the operatory or in the office for the patient with their name on it, or if they take it with them, it's a great way to have it. They put it on the nape of their neck, um, behind the ears, on the collarbone. It's a nice way of them having their own personal thing. I love this one. This is. Do you remember the Vicks? These little things you used to use when you were kids. That's what this is like and so it reminds me of it. But you can buy these and you take the wick out and you put about three to six drops of the oil in it and then you put the wick back in and now they have their little own personal inhaler going on. These you can buy at Amazon. You can buy a pack of 20 for $8.50. So it's like 42 cents a piece. Is 42 cents worth your patient sitting in the chair and getting that scaling done or that crown prep done, oh my God, that's a no brainer. So in my mind, it's extremely important that they have what they need to stay calm. Now, I'm gonna to talk to you why I did not recommend diffusing. You wanna diffuse it, be my guest. I'm not telling you not to, but sadly, I don't practice clinical hygiene so much anymore, but when I did, few years back in this holistic practice, I was like, okay, this is great. I have a couple patients I knew that were anxious that day. So I'm going to get my diffuser out and I'm going to diffuse the lavender oil in the operatory all day long. It's going to be great. Everybody's going to be nice and calm. It's going to be awesome. It's about 3.30 in the afternoon and I hear the receptionists. There's two girls up at the desk and one goes to the other. She's, God, I don't know why I'm so tired. And then the other one's like, yeah, I can fall asleep. Why am I so exhausted? And then I'm in the repertory and I'm here and I'm talking. They're chatting about how exhausted they are. They could put their head on the desk and I go, oh my God. They've been smelling the lavender all day long. So they're now ready to go to sleep. So I'm putting the staff to sleep. So that's why I like the personal you know, the personal inhaler thing and, or putting it on themselves because that way it's going on with them and I'm not you know, making my staff not out. So that's my personal thing. Again, you want to diffuse it, please do. Now, for those who want to take essential oils to the next level, uh, this is primarily mostly for the hygienist. There is a program for dentists also, but it's mostly for the hygienist. Um, it is the aura spa or the dental spa where these actually, uh, these essential oils have been developed specifically by chemists along with a hygienist. And what they do, it creates a, um, a neuromuscular transmission, transmission from the body to the mind that results in a deep relaxation. Um, it has a great angiolytic effect because you're doing a touch therapy along with the 
volatile oils in the essential oil where it's going into the olfactory system. So now those essential oils are creating a sense of relaxation. And then that touch therapy is also creating um, a sense of relaxation along with the neuroacoustic music or software where the patient's going to listen. So now you're putting them in a deep meditative state using touch, essential oils, and music. So this is a great way to use um, essential oils like at that next level. Um, it's, it's a wonderful uh, option. Um, and it does not take any more time than what you're already doing. You're doing your extra oral exams, you're doing your thyroid check, you're doing your submandibular, you're doing your check for your, um, for your uh, yeah, okay, I remember the word. <laughs> your lymph nodes, okay. Yeah, it's been, I've been out of clinical for a little while, I'm sorry. Um, you're checking your lymph nodes, you're, you're doing your extra oral exam anyway, so you're just doing it slightly different. So you're not adding any additional time to what you're already doing. Um, it's not a spa treatment, even though the spa in the word, it's not like, you know, we're doing foo-foo, you know, things, which is great to do too, but you're, it's actually um, evidence-based science that you're doing, and, but the patient in their mind is like, oh, this feels so great. I mean, who doesn't love a massage except me? So it's a, it's a nice, nice option. They've done studies where it actually showed that it lowered the blood pressure by 10 points. Patients are falling asleep in the chair. These are the patients that didn't even want to sit in your chair. They're now snoozing in your chair. So um, I actually have information on her if you're interested. Um, but, you know, we're, we'll talk about more of that another time. Um, now, we're going to talk about emotional freedom technique. Does anybody here know about emotional freedom technique or tapping? Okay. Some, yeah, some. Anybody doing it? Awesome. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, I was doing tapping yesterday because I didn't have a flight out. I was all booked to have a flight out. It was canceled. And yeah, I started taking my aconite and I started tapping because I was about ready to jump out my skin because I was frantic. So emotional freedom technique, for those who don't know what it is, it is actually something you can teach your patients to do. It's in your handouts in the app. Um, under my name. You can actually read it, print it out. You can learn how to do it. For those who don't know how to do it, teach your patients to do this because they're, it's like a self-soothing thing and that it has science behind it. It's a set of techniques which utilize the body's energy or meridian system. The meridian system like acupuncture, it's acupressure. So you're hitting certain points on the body that tapping on those acupressure points, you're creating a block of their stressor. So it actually works as if somebody was having an acupuncture. Um, so they're tapping into their own uh, healing properties. So meridians are energy pathways in the body for, through Chinese medicine, it's your chi. For those of us who, uh, who do know and use it a lot, uh, we also use meridian charts for our patients with, um, with organs. Uh, so we're very into the meridians. Um, both the old and new have converged because there is a recent Korean study that proved beyond a shadow of a doubt there is such a thing as a meridian. It's not anecdotal. We're not a bunch of kooks just banging on ourselves. It actually is a study that proves that meridians are real. So, it's a stress relief by touching certain points. So, I mean, how much easier is that? And talk, docs, how about cost effective? Talk about free? That is a huge benefit right there. And, uh, um, you know, and if you're in a holistic practice, you can't, you're not going to have a patient that's going to say to you that, oh, are you crazy? No, this is what they come to you for. So if you can educate them and, and help them put themselves in a position where they can help self control their own anxiety, it's, it's a definitely a, a huge benefit. All right. So, how does it work? Harvard studies show that stimulating the selected points on the body, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, it stimulates um, blocking the signals that are going to the amygdala. There are two amygdalae in the brain, in the midbrain on either side. And when we think of our stressor, their amygdala is starting to fire off. Amygdala is actually governed by the sympathetic nervous system. That's your fight or flight. 
to your limbic system. And what happens is whether, like I said earlier, whether uh, a threat is real or perceived, your amygdala, which are about the size of almonds, are now starting to fire off. And that's why you're getting like this whole anxiety, panic-stricken sensation. So when you do the tapping and touch and you put kinetic energy on these spots, you can see they do PET, they've done PET scans and MRI. They can show that the amygdala start that stops firing. It's starting to calm itself down. So, and this is Harvard, so it's not too shabby uh, as far as the studies go. So again, this is the, the line of how it works. You think about your stressor, and then also with tapping, it doesn't have to be anxiety, but we're used to using that. You can use it for anything. You think about your stressor, you're firing off your amygdala. Now you start tapping with some affirmations. So you're hitting meridians, you're hitting those meridians. So what happens is the input of the kinetic energy into those points, you're now going to block the arousal of your amygdala. And then you're going to start to calm down. And you now have restored balance in the body that medications can't do because medications are temporary. You take a Haldol. Or you take a Valium or you take a Xanax, right? The patient is knocked out and loopy and they can barely walk. How is that helping a patient? You're putting them in a position where they are now, to a degree, okay, they have less anxiety because they're knocked out, you know? Uh, I just don't see. This is a way of being able to get to the root cause. You're stopping the fight or flight. You're stopping the sympathetic nervous system from taking over um, themselves. Patients have full control over that. This is something the patient has to do. You can't do it for them. So patients that are receptive, you know, please teach them, and it's very easy to teach them. Here we have a study that's suggesting that emotional freedom technique demonstrated a significant decrease in the anxiety scores. They took um, a group of people, and they had them measure their anxiety before the dental uh, appointment, and the, the, um, the average was about 8 so that's what you're going to have the, your patient do. You're going to have them assess how stressed out they are. You know, from a scale of 1 to 10, 10, I'm about read, ready to jump out the window, or to 0, 1, like, I'm, I'm cool. Um, have them measure how anxiety, you know, anxious they are. Then you have them do the series of tapping. And then in this study, it showed that they got themselves down to a 3, which is pretty awesome. And then if they did another series, they could probably get themselves down to a 0. Meaning, get, get, come out with you, say whatever you have, I'm good. Because they were able to control their sympathetic nervous system with using the meridian uh, points. Here we have another study showing the same thing, you know, that we are reducing the, uh, the amount of anxiety through meridian points. Um, it's suggesting, even if it's only a brief few minutes, it doesn't have to be a long session. It could be a very short session. It's enough for them to get them comfortable and sitting in the chair. Okay, so tapping points very easily. I'm going to stand off to the side. I'm going to show you where the tapping points are. You can do it with me. You don't have to do it. Um, honestly, I'm going to be, this is, this is real. <laughs> My son's going to school to become a, uh, a uh, nurse practitioner. I wanted to become a naturopath. I'm hoping. Anyway, I actually was doing this in front of him yesterday because he's like, oh, come on, Mike, show me the science. So I showed him the science and. He's like, oh, come on, this can't be real. So I asked him to, someday I want him to do it himself. He's extremely impressed with the, uh, with the study. So I'm showing him how to do it. And he's like, Ma, I could see that your whole body changed. I said, yeah, that wasn't for your show. That was actually because it was real. So let me show you. You're going to start with side of the hand, the karate chop point. Then you have the top of the head, side of the eye, side of the eye here under your eye, the philtrum, the mental labial sulcus, which is right under, between your lip and your chin, right under your clavicle. When I do it, I don't want to do just the one point. I do both. I'm going to show you how I do it. You can just tap one point or you can tap both by slapping. On the side, under your arm, for women, it's right about where your bra strap is. For men, it's right about mid, mid chest. And those are basically your points. So I'm going to go around one session. And I'm going to show you how it works. And what you're going to do is you're going to use affirmation. So we're going to use stress or anxiety. So I'm going to pretend I'm a patient. 
Um, and then there's things that you're going to say. So you're going to start with anything, a larger area. You probably want to use four fingers. You can use two, but four is probably better. Smaller areas like the side of your eyes and your eyes. stuff. You can use two fingers. Top of the head, you can probably use four. No, you can use what you want. So we're going to start. Don't use your fingernails. Use your fingertips. You're going to start on the side. And you're going to tap to, you know, you don't want to hurt yourself, but you want to feel it. You know, you want to feel that, that energy going in there. And I'm going to say something like, this anxiety is taking control of my life, but I fully accept and love myself. This anxiety is becoming too much, but I fully accept and truly love myself. This anxiety is becoming too strong, but I fully accept and love myself. This anxiety, then you go to the side of the eye. This anxiety. My anxiety. You want to hit each spot about five to seven times. My anxiety is too much. This anxiety. My anxiety. This anxiety. Now you're gonna keep going. Now I'm sorry. That was. I can see how I kind of came to. Because I'm hitting my meridian points, man. I'm making myself too calm. <laughs> so it's like it's it, it works. Um, it works. You have to be open to the the fact that the meridians are real. So what you do is you have the patients do that, and you have them do two more sessions. Yeah, I didn't do the top of the head, did I? I forgot to do that. So what you're gonna do is yeah, you know, end with the top of the head. I made myself too calm. <laughs> you're going to end with the top of the head. And then you'd start again. After you do that, start again with the side of the hand, side of the eye, side of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, here, here, under the arm, top of the head. All right. So you just do that for several, about three, four sessions. And then you have the patient reassess. How do they feel? Oh, yeah, it was about a, it was about an eight. I'm down to about maybe a four. Okay, do you want to do another session? Because yeah, I think I should. So you let them do it another one. You let them do another three. So you can actually teach them to do this at home before they even come in. So they can do it before they're in the office, or if they're just too frazzled and they come in, they can do it there in your operatory. Just make sure you have a little extra time for that because you want to make sure that they. They have the time to, to, to do it and you can guide them if you need to. But again, the handout is in the um, app that you can actually review and learn to do it uh, completely. So again, free and effective. Hello. Now, this is something I love, homeopathy. Those who uses homeopathy in their office? Yay! There's so many uses for homeopathy. I'm only going to talk about anxiety today, but homeopathy is, um, a, I'm a huge component, uh, proponent, excuse me. Um, I've gotten myself off a lot of medications. I have rheumatoid arthritis and Hashimoto's and all that fun stuff. And I take nothing. I take nothing. No meds. Um, because I want to be healthy and I take my homeopathy and uh, supplements and things like that. So for those who are not using it and don't know too much about it, I'm going to make a quick, quick, um, brief, um, synopsis. It's basically, uh, it's like cures like, um, back, yeah, let's say BC Hippocrates touched on this, but it was Dr. Hanneman back in like the 17, 1800s who really uh, did this. Uh, he actually took uh, substances and took it himself and he proved whether they were going to help or not. Um, then he had other people he tested them on. They were called provers. So basically he was able to find, take all these different substances and for somebody who is healthy, they would get sick. For somebody who was not, it would help them. So they would give them what would make would promote the symptom if you were healthy gave it to somebody who was sick and it actually helped them that's the whole premise of homeopathy even the queen mom loves it so much she only goes to the royal london hospital 
Uh, Dr. Harris, who is her doctor, is a huge proponent and actually wrote a big article saying that he believes that it needs to be integrated more in um, mainstream medicine because it is so effective. I mean, she's, what, 92, 93, and she's doing fabulous. So the number one for anxiety is aconite. It is fabulous. I actually took some before myself, and I have a nice bag of samples for everybody. Everybody's going to get a bottle of aconite to take with them that they can use on Monday. So everything I'm talking to you today, you're going to be able to start with on Monday morning. If you don't have aconite, you're going to have it today. Because I want you to take away from this course something that you can have action items and do right away to help people. When you help people, you're, it's priceless. Never mind are they going to accept those treatment plans. They're going to get their work done. They're going to get healthy. They're going to refer their friends and family. They're going to be patients for life. So having tools in your toolbox, other than Haldol, Xanax, and Valium, you're going to have patients that will rave about you on Yelp and Google, which is priceless. And the, all these things are relatively inexpensive. I know I'm repeating myself, but I cannot press upon you how strongly I feel about it. So yeah, back to aconite. Aconite is the best for, uh, for generalized anxiety. It's usually a very sudden and intense uh, fear. Um, the person is very agitated and restless. You were talking about like jerky movements before, all right? Um, they think they're going to die and they're, um, they're, you know, other symptoms, they have dry skin, dry mouth, uh, they're pounding heart, that whole fight or flight sensation. Um, it can also be used for ongoing anxiety, um, but it's really just basically for rapid onset, um, panic attacks, etc. We use it in our office a lot, and it works great. Like I said, I took it earlier this afternoon because I knew I was going to be coming up on stage. I've done you know, public speaking often, but I'm sorry. I don't care if you do public speaking, speaking a lot. It's still a little nerve-wracking, but so it, and it helps uh, tremendously along with my tapping. So love aconite. So how do you use it? You, the potency is about 30 C. Um, again, I don't want to get into a homeopath, uh, homeopathic course, but there's a way of, you know, the potency, the less, um, the more diluted it is, the stronger it is. So the 30 C is about like middle of the road, average kind of, uh, dosage. You're going to take about, have them take five pellets the night before. Um, the morning of, and then about 45 minutes before the dental appointment. And they can still drive. They can still walk. They can still talk. They're not hurt. You know, it's not like they're, they're knocking themselves out and they can't function. They're just going to be like, wow, I feel good. You know, like I don't feel that, that my heart's going to pound out my chest. So it really works very nicely. Now we have uh, gelsemium. We don't use gels that much, but it's, it's something you can have in your toolbox also. These are for your patients that get weak, like they're just, oh, I'm, so, I'm so scared. And they feel weak need and they just feel like they're just going to pass out. They have diarrhea. Um, you know, a lot of patients, oh, every time I go to the dentist, I'm, I have to run to the bathroom because I just, you know, my stomach can't handle it. That's where you're going to use your gels. Um, you know, they tremble. So this is... Uh, you know, they want to like hide in a corner. This is, this is where you'd use your gels on your, on your patients. The potency again is about 30 C and you're going to have them take three pellets the night before the morning of and 45 minutes before a dental appointment. Now, if you don't, now, if, if you don't use homeopathy, you're not sure what the heck is a pellet. Is it a pill? She wrote, she spelled it wrong. No, a pellet. With homeopathy, they're little tiny sugar pills, literally sugar pills that have the essence or the energy of the substance. So like aconite, you saw the flower. So it's the energy of that flower that's in that little tiny sugar pill or pellet. They look like little round balls. So if something depends on the size. You can get big ones, small ones. The ones I have for you are real tiny, so they dissolve right away. Um, so you're going to have the patient take three tiny little balls, put them under their tongue, subling. And it's going to melt. They don't want them to chew them. You don't want them to swallow them. You want them to melt sublingually so that way it gets right into the bloodstream and it works quite well that way. So that's how you take homeopathy. Now, 
I don't really use this one much, but there's always a call for it. You never know. Califas. This is for your patients who are so overwhelmed. And every time they think about going to the dentist, I have an appointment in a month and I just don't know what to do with myself. These are the patients that just make themselves crazy every day for, you know, I have an appointment in three months for another cleaning. I can't do it. These are the patients that just like every day are just constantly, like, this is on the top of their mind. They become overwhelmed. Um, they have nervous breakdown thinking about it. They're just really um, oversensitive and very delicate. Just the thought of it, it just really um, sets them over the edge. Um, and they become very exhausted. They're very irritable. So these, this is where you would use your Califos. Um, again, I don't use it so often, but it's good. I have it in my toolbox if I need it for, you know, specific patients. So, um, how do you use this? This, you take, you know, a 6X potency, three pellets, two to three times a day for a few weeks. So this is again, longer because the, the dread is longer lasting. Um, you take it longer. So this way it helps, uh, quell some of their fear, uh, you know, from the start. Uh, so that way, by the time the appointment's there, they're, they're more manageable. Now, next we have Bach Flower Remedies. I'm sure uh, most of us who practice holistic medicine, you know, have heard about this stuff. You get it in your Whole Foods. Extremely easy. Um, I had a patient uh, about two weeks ago. I had a fill-in do hygiene one day. Well, a hygienist came, went home sick. And I had a new patient who hadn't been to the dentist in 10 years. And she specifically said, I haven't been to the dentist in 10 years because I have such fear of the dentist. And I said, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you're talking to me because you're talking to the right person because I was doing this. And I said, well, we have all this stuff in our inventory. She goes, well, no, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, all, I'm good. I took rescue remedy last night. I went, oh, that's fantastic. I'm so glad. She goes, yeah, I took it last night and I took a little this morning and I am actually okay. I was able to do her gross debridement, you know, her full snuff series and all the whole thing. So uh, the rescue remedy worked great for her, right? So her fear wasn't that pathological panic or, you know, phobia. So again, you have different varying uh, degrees of, of anxiety. Here we have a, um, another study that suggests that the uh, rescue remedy does help reduce levels of situational anxiety. I don't necessarily need a study for me because like I said, I had that patient who came in and said like, I'm good. I took it and I, I it really helped me. So it, it's, it was a great thing. Now, this is my new favorite thing. I can't tell you how I can't wait to get it in my office. I already had to talk with my doc and I'm like, I don't know why you don't not using CBD oil. Why are we not using CBD oil in this practice? So, but what is CBD oil? So, can, so most of us know, some of us don't, I'm like oil, oil. Cannabis oil is a compound derived from cannabis plants. It may help people with anxiety, reduce their symptoms. Um, it's projected that demand for CBD oil is actually going to rise about 700%. Um, that's coming from like Forbes and all these people who project what's, you know, the up and coming stuff that's going on. It's going to rise that high because uh, CBD oil is great, not just for anxiety. It's an amazing painkiller and anti-inflammatory. People are using it for cancer. Um, I was actually on the plane yesterday and she saw, I was going through my slides and she saw, I was looking at this, she goes, I use that. And I'm like, oh, that's great. And then we had gotten this, her husband, her, excuse me, her brother has pancreatic cancer. She has him using it. He was supposed to live three months after diagnosis. It's now a year. So that being said, I'm not a year doctor. I'm not saying we use it for cancer. I'm here saying we use it for anxiety, but there's, this is an up and coming thing that we all need to pay attention to. So um, it affects all aspects of the body and um, also the endocannabinoid system. It can help with inflammation, mood, memory, immune system, reproduction, pain perception, sleep, and appetite. So, what's the difference between hemp CBD and cannabis CBD? One word. Tetrahydrocannabinol. The stuff that makes you high. That's the stuff that makes you high. Hemp CBD oil doesn't really have much THC in it. The cannabis oil does. The cannabis oil usually has about 10 to 25% of the THC. Um, 
And again, that's the stuff that makes you high. That's why it has to be sold out of dispensaries. States that have legal, uh, you know, cannabis dispensaries, that's primarily what they're using is the cannabis oil, uh, cannabis CBD oil, excuse me. But the hemp uh, CBD oil has an average about maybe 1% of the THC in it. And once it's processed, you have down to like 0.03% THC, which is has no psychoactive effects to it. You can't get high. I don't care how much you take. You just can't get high. You can only get the great benefits of it. So that's why hemp uh, CBD is actually legal in every state. It's governed by um, the United States government because it's all considered a drug. Because even though hemp is not necessarily cannabis CBD because of the THC content, it's still a cannabis plant, but it's just industrial hemp. So that being said, that's the difference. Cannabis CBD can only be purchased in a state that is has legal. I think we're in one. And uh, hemp can be bought in any state. But you have to be 18 years old to purchase it. CBD and anxiety. Um, there was about a, there was a study in 2011 that they took, again, this is a really small study because this is all new, relatively new stuff. It's a really small study of about 10 people with social anxiety and they gave them uh, CBD oil. They've never had their anxiety treated with anything, nothing. Um, so they gave them about 400 milligrams of CBD. Um, and they gave the other some placebo. The participants who were given the CBD oil had successfully improved their anxiety, anxiety symptoms compared to the placebo. And why did this happen? Some of the research suggests that since the THC and the CBD affect certain receptors in the amygdala, that sounds familiar, that part of the brain that engages our fight or flight response, it actually can cause a less excitability in that amygdala. So you're now going to have less of an anxiety response. It's all that midbrain that's you know causing us to want to run out the room and go see the dentist. And we have all these options. So here's your study that I was just talking about. So it's significantly decreased subjective anxiety. More studies nearly need to be done. It affects the limbic system. The limbic system, again, is the emotional system in, in our brain. It's uh, emotion, aggression, things like that. So, and here we have another study um, that shows that it has uh, uh, strong evidence to supports that it helps uh, generalize anxiety disorder, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. So it can help, you know, a multitude of, of things. The only thing is, you just be careful, you know, make sure you're getting it from a company that's reputable. There might be one here in the exhibit floor. I didn't even know he was going to be here. I knew that he had a product and I went to look for it on his site and it wasn't there. I'm like, why? And then I came here and I'm like, how come it's not on your site? And there was an issue with it. But so there's, there's a, you want something that has a good um, bioavailability. You want something that's going to make sure that it absorbs well into the body. You don't want to use any old hemp oil that you can buy off Amazon necessarily because you don't know how clean it is and you know what the bioavailability um, of it is. So. Um, uh, it's good for short-term anxiety. So you have your patient coming in for the for your crown prep or you know your scaling root planing, etc. You have them take it um, before that. But you're not treat you're not a medical doctor. We're not treating for a long-term anxiety, so um, we don't have to worry about that. So as far as dosage, and, and another thing, really no negative side effects. So what's great is because you're, there's such low THC in the hemp oil, you're not going to get addictive to it. You, you can't get high off of it, so you can't get addicted to it. So you're now helping your patient not only with their anxiety, but pain control and inflammation, you know, so that patient's coming in for an extraction and having to take that CBD oil, and they're not going to get addicted to your prescription or your recommendation as opposed to your opioids, which is becoming a huge problem. Start as far as dosage, again, because it's relatively new, it goes by weight, A, and how you metabolize. So they always want you to start off with the lowest dose possible. Again, it really depends what oil you get, and you know, you, have, you go by their you know, recommendations. This is um, not written in stone. You can take this as a guideline. This is not, I wouldn't say, well, Fran said that I have to use this dosage. No, you have to go by what your patient's symptoms are. I always start maybe a little less than you think, then gauge it, 
then you raise it from there. Okay. Um, you want to be careful not to, you know, again, it's not going to harm them, but you don't want to overdose them, you know, give them somebody too much of something that they don't really need. Okay. Now, Nucom. Anybody have heard of Nucom? I love it. So I can go home now. Most of us have. I love Nucom. I actually found it years ago when I worked for a conventional office because I couldn't find a holistic practice to work in. And I found it because he went and got doc sedation uh, accreditation in a state where there was no reciprocity. He couldn't use it in New Jersey. So all that money down there, and he couldn't do sedation. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to find a way because I want to make sure the patients are going to be taken care of. So I did my research and I was like, oh, and lo and behold, this is a great item. And for those of you who don't know what it is, I'm going to quick tell you um, that it was developed back in 2002. Uh, Solace Life Sciences decided they were going to put together a neuroscience technology designed to naturally relax your mind and your body within minutes without drugs. It's using what your body already produces. Your body makes it every night before you go to sleep. Or if you're in a boring lecture, <laughs> your body's going to produce it too. So, yeah, I'm sorry I digress. <laughs> That's why I'm so animated. I'm trying, I don't want you to fall asleep. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, it, it uses biochemistry, biochemistry and physics um, and neurophysiology to rapidly and reliably create a deep relaxation. And you can see the different components here. You're using neuroacoustic software. You're using a um, a supplement. You're using light blocking uh, uh, glasses or masks because you don't want visual stimuli, which is going to activate what? The amygdala, right? <laughs> um, then you have your CES, which is your cranial electrical stimulator, which actually helps the supplement get into the bloodstream. All right, now. We're going to talk about exactly what all that means. So the new calm allows the dentist to perform dentistry without having to stop a hundred times because the patient needs to get up to spit out or the tongue is going all over the place and the doctor needs to go, I'm going to go do it. So one time the doc's going to want to do a hygiene exam is because he can't control the patient. So I'm sorry, that was a joke, but um, <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> bad one too. Um, it significantly reduces the gag reflex, the tongue movement, uh, the excessive swallowing, the whole the things that we talked about earlier, reduces the amount of local anesthesia you needed because if the patient's a little bit, you know, kind of in that meditative deep state, you know, you don't need to really, you know, shoot them up with all that septo or lido. So, and it really helps uh, healing pain, uh, healing and, and pain management. So basically, it's back to what we were talking about earlier, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Your sympathetic nervous system, that's that fight or flight. Your body's ready to go. You're ready to, oh, God, i got to sit in this chair, and oh, he's going to stick that drill in my mouth, and oh, those scalers, oh, and that hurts all the time. And so this is where your body's starting to, you know, your amygdala is firing, and your, you know, your heart's pounding and, and all that. So you want to kick in your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your limbic system that is going to give you that rest and recovery. Um, it's associated with emotions and contentment, gratitude and calm and relaxation. So you want to aggravate or activate, excuse me, your parasympathetic to overtake your sympathetic nervous system. So how do you do that? So sometimes you need external causes and or things that will create that. And that is what Nucom will do. And so the, these other things I talked to you. So this is a natural way of being able to do it because when I tell you what it utilizes for those who don't, they're going to, you're going to be surprised. Neurophysiological impact. It rapidly, it's a rapid induction into a parasympathetic hypnagogic disassociative state, which means hypnagogic means right before you start to fall asleep, you know, when you're laying in bed, and you're laying there and you just finally get yourself all comfy and cozy and then you start, you're just starting to drift off a little bit. That's GABA. That's your body creating GABA. And that, don't ask me to say the full name, it's GABA, the other, uh, something acid. I can't say it. It is your body's way of telling itself, okay, time to go to bed. And so you're now starting to drift off. So this will 
create that sensation. And then you're able to sustain it because you are using certain systems to keep that parasympathetic, excuse me, parasympathetic uh, system going. Um, and the best part about it, you rapidly return to a functional cognitive state right afterwards. Patients can drive home, go home, go to work, and be very functional. Unlike these other meds I was talking about earlier uh, that knock them out for the rest of the day, and they're lucky if they're okay for the next day. Um, I actually used this on a patient several years ago, and I used this on a patient. This guy, Steve, uh, big guy, and he goes, Fran, I love you, but I just, you know, I just, oh, I hate cleaning. So I said, like, let me use the new calm on you. He's all right. So I used the new calm on him, and you can see his whole body just kind of sunk into the chair, and I'm doing the whole, I did the cleaning for him, and when I finished, I took everything off of it, and, and I, I said, how did everything go? He goes, oh, my God, Fran, that was better than any dead concert I went to. That was awesome. <laughs> and for those millennials who don't know it, that is, you know, ask your parents. So they, he really enjoyed it. So he was actually able to not only enjoy the cleaning, he was able to enjoy his experience. So let's talk about how it works. Here we have a, um, a guy who's associated with Newcom, and they've done a lot of extensive studies. Um, you know, like we can talk about studies, but at this point, let's just talk about what it does. Um, it really reduces the heart rate. You can see here how at about 10 minutes, heart rate drops and it was sustained during the whole time that the patient was on Newcom. And then once you take it off, it goes right back to normal. That's what I was saying before. That's what's nice about it. You can get them in that nice relaxed state in a relatively short period of time. So patient uh, has an appointment. It would be in a perfect world, you have two operatories. Have the patient come in a little bit early. Have them sit in the operatory, the, your extra operatory. Get them started on the new calm. Get them in that nice state. Then you can go in there and start treating them or add that extra time to your appointment so that way they're nice and, and chill out before you can actually treat them. Because it takes a few minutes. You can't just put it on and start immediately. You need to give them that time to get into that nice uh, low heart rate uh, to get them comfortable. And here we are, more studies, you know, more studies and more studies that show, you can see here the, how the heart rate lowers, you know, the rate of the heart, you know, lowers. So we, we can just go, and here we have another study. You can see how that really uh, relaxation can be sustained during the whole time that they're on the, uh, the Nucom. Um, I'm a big research geek and I don't like anecdotal. Well, my, oh, the hygiene, my, my, my friend's hygienist said, you need to use this. And I'm like, no, show me the studies that it works. <laughs> so basically it's four components that you use. It's safe, reliable, and predictable. You got four components. Like I said before, you have the neuroacoustic software, you have the uh, cranial electro system stimulator right here. And then you have your, this is your GABA, GABA cream, or you can use, uh, they have tablets you can chew. It's easier to use the cream. I use the cream now. I used to use the tablets. The patients have to chew them up and they leave it in their mouth for a long period of time. Let's put the cream on. And then you have your Nucom mask, or if the patient is very claustrophobic, they can use dark glasses, really dark glasses, because you don't want that visual stimuli uh, to activate the amygdala. So... Basically, this is recognized generally as safe. Um, it interrupts adrenaline the same way your body does. It's because it uses GABA. It slows your, your adrenaline down, etc. And you're going to rub it onto the carotids because that's where you're going to get your absorption. So you rub it on the carotid arteries here. So the patient gets a little mini massage. I put my, glo my gloves on and I rub it into their carotid arteries right here yeah, for a minute or two until it's pretty well rubbed in. And then you put on the cranial electro stimulation because that will help the absorption of that GABA that you've just put on the carotid. So it actually enhances the absorption. So you're going to get that better response. You're going to be able to get that parasympathetic response to be able to overtake your sympathetic uh, response. So that microcurrent is going to really help. So you know, we apply the patches. They come like little gummy sticky patches. The patch is about that big. And you put them right behind the ear. You know that little soft spot right behind the ear? That's where you put them. Not on the, uh, you know, not on the, uh, um, the 
I can't remember. Say I'm at a clinical for too long. <laughs> that spot right behind the, the hard spot, the soft spot. You want to put it right in that, that little hollow, and that's where it's going to really work great. Mastoid process. There we go. So here it comes to this old lady. Um, the neuroacoustic software. Then I used it when it first came out. So you only had like one sound that was classical music, and that was it. What if your patient hated classical music? So it's like, okay, I gotta listen to classical music to try to have less anxiety. I'm having anxiety listening to it. So now they have different sounds. They have just sounds, or they have different soft music. They have classical. Music. So there's a great great amount of different software in the tablet. That way you can put this new acoustic, this, the um, the wireless headphones. So now you're not going to get tangled up in wires, which I used to get tangled up in wires. I see somebody was shaking her head before. You probably had the old fashioned one. Yeah. So you got the wires everywhere and you know, so much, it's so much easier. So the, the sound waves are going to lower the brain activity to an alpha and theta state. So it's going to be from here. So now the brain wave is like this. And then your GABA is working. So you're starting to fall sleepy. And then you're now in a meditative brain wave state. And life is good. So here you turn on your tablet. And then it's balanced. One side is a certain hertz. The other side is another hertz. Your body, your brain kind of subtracts it. So that's where you get at that 12 hertz. That's where you get into the alpha and theta state, which is a meditative state. And um, it works beautifully. And then again, your light blocking, because it blocks the light and it blocks any visual stimuli. Like they see the drill coming at them. They, they won't see it. And this is actually an MRI that shows the, um, this. these are, excuse me, these are the, whoops, wrong way, hello. We didn't want to do that. How do you figure out how to use my own thing? All right. These are the um, the, uh, the cranial electrical stimuli pads, pads I was talking about behind the ears. And this is showing you how it actually is causing it to get into the brain, uh, the GABA. And you can see how uh, it really is very uh, effective. Shown here are the new common packs, the deep midbrain. Again, midbrain, amygdala is in the midbrain. Um, so you're now, these, again, these are the patches and actually that's the size of the patch. And you can see how it's stimulating that GABA to get into the brain and now it's calming everything down. So now you're new calmed. You're in a nice, comfortable state of mind. So you can't fight a battle if your patient is anxious and they're, you know, complaining. And a lot of times you, your patients who are nasty and aggressive and all that, it's not that they're nasty and aggressive, it's just they're scared. They're afraid. They're human beings. So, you know, having options like this really can make a difference. So, um, you tell me it's not going to harm you. It's, you can leave here and go to work. You can go to your son's soccer game and, you know, you'll be cool. Uh, it's a nice, nice way to, to be able to help them. And it takes minimal effort, minimal time, no risks. And what's great, you know, doctors that are using it, fabulous. But everything I talked about today is every single hygienist in this office, in this room can use it because you don't need a license for it. You don't need to be trained on it. I mean, there's, of course, training uh, when you use a Nucom, but, you know, takes minutes of video. Um, it's patented. Uh, it's FDA cleared. FDA, well, you know, that's another story, but, you know, uh, it's, it passed the tests, you know, and passed my test because I know it works. Um, so the benefits is uh, patients are relaxed. You got faster, safer, easier in dentistry, better, better clinical outcomes. And what's nice, the fee-for-service, you're going to be able to offer this to your patients. You can either charge separately or what we do is we build it in to our fees. So um, a lot of stuff that we do, we don't charge separately because we I don't want it. It's an extra fee. I don't want it. No, we want to help you. So we just build it in or we don't charge at all because, you know, we're not jerks. We want to help people. So some, we won't even charge them for it. You know, so uh, we want you to get the work done because we care about you and your health. And if your mouth is healthy, your body's going to be healthy. So it's, it's a win, win, win. So these are the five things that we talked about. Simple, essential oils, tapping, homeopathy, CBD oil, and Nucom. 
These are five action items that you can do. The Newcom, um, that is a bit of a, a, a cost item. So that's something you can talk to your doc about and docs who are interested, you know, if you've looked into it. It's a, it's a couple thousand dollars for the system. But if you get one patient to accept your $10,000 treatment plan or, you know, the couple crowns right there, it's paid for. Just one patient, you pay for it. So it just, to me, it makes no sense not to use it. So these are nice, simple ways that you can help your patients uh, get work, feel relaxed, feel better. They think you're a god and a goddess. Um, will rave about you and they will forever be your patient. And I want to thank you for spending your late day listening to me. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that.